Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros, and I'm here with another video. And in this video, I'm bringing back the AMD versus Intel series with Blur again, and I'm gonna be doing a $1,000 Intel gaming PC build. So without further ado, let's roll that intro. First off, if you haven't already, please check out Blur's channel. His link will be in the description below. Go subscribe to him, really awesome guy. Me and him have done these collabs for the past couple of videos and he's really awesome to work with. So go check out his video. He's gonna be releasing his at the same time I do and he's gonna be doing an AMD build at $1,000 while I'll do an Intel build at $1,000. So without further ado, let's get into the video. First up for my build, the processor I chose was the Intel Core i5-6600K quad-core processor. It's stocked at 3.5 gigahertz and is a really awesome processor. It's a K processor, so it has overclocking capabilities, and it comes in at a price tag of only $233. So it's a good value in between the i7 and i5 range, and for, just for gaming, you really don't need an i7. If you're going to be just gaming, an i5 will suffice just plenty, especially on the new Skylake platform with very strong single-core performance, this CPU should definitely do the job for the build. Now the cool this bad boy, we got the legendary Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Uh, it comes in at a price tag of $349 with a $10 mail-in rebase. So you can get this bad boy for $24.89 on outletpc.com. If you want all the links to this build, just to let you all know, they're in the description below. So be sure to check that out. It's a PC part picker link, so you get all the information about it and you can go through step by step and buy the place from the best value. So check the link in the description if you want specifics on what exactly we're using for this build. But yeah, the Hyper 212 Evo should do awesome for this build. I have it in my system, cools my i7-2600K really well and allow us for overclocking headroom with this CPU. Now since we're going to be overclocking, we got to get a motherboard that's capable of overclocking. And really, Skylink motherboards are pretty expensive, especially ones that are overclockable. So when we picked up a motherboard, I decided to go with the ASRock Z170 Pro 4S ATX motherboard. It's actually only a $79 motherboard and offers the ability to overclock and a very sturdy design. Now, ASRock makes some pretty quality motherboards. I have one in my system with my i7. It's done really good so far. I like ASRock. Their designs on their boards aren't the best. It has like an orange color scheme to it, so it's kind of unique, but it's a pretty solid board. It allows overclocking, so this should really do the job for the build. It supports up to 64 gigs of RAM, all that sorts of stuff, so you can just stuff it with RAM whenever you want to. Has enough PCI lanes, add our graphics card if you want to, and bam, full ATX form factor to put in our full ATX form factor case. So I think this board's gonna do the job for us. As for RAM, I decided to opt for 16 gigs of Kingston HyperX Fury Black RAM, which comes in at a price tag of $59.99. Now, yes, I went for 16 gigs because I'm starting to realize that in some titles, they're becoming really RAM hungry, like Overwatch and GTA. They start chewing up your RAM. And I've been playing games before I upgraded my system to 16 gigs. I would chew up to six and seven gigs of RAM, and I'd be right on the brink of going over my eight gig limit. So I highly recommend when you're getting into the $900,000 price range, you're just offer 16 gigs of RAM because RAM is so cheap nowadays and at only 60 bucks you're getting a lot of RAM for the value and you can also opt for more if you want to but this is just basic DDR4 RAM at 2133 speed which is like the base clock speed for DDR4 so it does a job for this build and it's black and will fit the color scheme very well. As for storage, you know how I do storage. I basically picked a boot SSD, which I went with the Samsung 850 Evo legendary SSD. I got a 250 gigabyte one for 88 bucks. Really fast SSD, really awesome value. I could have opted for the silicon power one, but I wanted something that was a little bit faster and would offer better reliability than my old silicon power one because who knows? I've had good luck with mine, but I don't really know how well the reliability is. And I know Samsung drives have great reliability, so I definitely opted for that one. And also for the mass storage, I decided to go with the good old Western Digital Caviar Blue Drive, one terabyte. If you want to opt for a Western Digital Caviar Black, you could. It would go over the budget just a little bit. A Black offers a faster drive overall, but mainly it's just for gaming. And a Western Digital Blue Drive does really good for just holding your mass storage and stuff. And if you want more storage, go right ahead. You can add two terabytes or as many terabytes as you want to put in your machine. And also add another hard drive down the line if you feel the need to. 
Now, just a disclaimer on this video card, the GTX 1070 hasn't been released yet, and I honestly, honestly recommend that you do not pick up this graphics card and that you wait for the 1070 to come out. But really, this is the card I have on here. I have the GTX 970 on here, which is the MSI GTX 10, 970, four gigabyte model, twin frozer, and it comes in at a total of about $299. I would wait for a 1070. I know the 1070 is going to be around $370, and I know this will push it over the price tag, but it's worth the money going $70 over the $1,000 budget. So I highly recommend you wait, but if you can't wait, a 970 is a good graphics card to play great at 1080p and that sort of thing. But this is my disclaimer before people go crazy in the comments. I highly suggest you wait for a 1070 or get a good steal on a 970 or that such during sales that are going on. I'm not really sure what the sales would be like time after I upload this video because I'm uploading it before the 1070 actually releases, but I recommend you hold out, try to find a good deal on a 1070, or find a steal on a 970 on liquidations. And as for the case, I went with the legendary Fractal Design Define R4 with a window. I could have went with the Define R5, but I like the Define R4, I just like the way it looks. Um, and it comes at a price tag of only $79 because it's the older model, and it looks really clean. I love the way the Define R4 looks, it's a very, very solid case. Uh, it has black and it's a side panel. Looks really cool. If you want to add LEDs, you can add LEDs. There's a little bit of wiggle room in the budget. We can find some cheap LEDs to add. Uh, it's, a, it's an awesome case. What can I say? Um, Fractal Design makes awesome quality cases. And last, but certainly not least, the power supply, which I went with the EVGA Supernova Next 650 Watt A Plus Gold Certified, which is fully modular. It's an awesome power supply. EVGA makes solid power supplies. 650 watts is plenty for this build. A plus gold rating for efficiency because, you know, it's just a very efficient power supply and it does the job at only $74. So that brings in a grand total with everything on here, minus exceptions, to $992.46 US dollars. So if you like this build, leave a like. If you dislike this build, leave a dislike. And if you have any suggestions or if you want to pick up this build, links will be in the description below. And if you want to buy some of these parts on Amazon, we have an Amazon affiliate link you can use in the description below. Every single time you buy parts online like that, DTX 1070, I recommend you pick up on launch day. It helps give us a kickback and helps support the channel without having to directly fund us with money. So. It's a win-win. But thank you guys again for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Check out all our other content and social media links. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.